This passage is about a book about an artist. Okay, and it talks about the artist Cezanne, who's a Cezanne, a French artist, who uh, and a book written about him. It also it talks about two things. It talks about the painter, his paintings, and also talks about the author of the book and his problems in describing the painter and his paintings. The post-impressionist Cezanne was one of the keenest observers of the industrial disenchantment of the late 19th century Western Europe. In the 21st century, his paintings had become remote to the temper of our times. The remote means distant, cut off. Ergo, a sub tough subject. That means a tough subject. His paintings became a tough subject. Clark's news according Accordingly, Clark's new study of the painter, Clark is the author of the book. We don't know the full form, full his full name. We've only been given his one name. So we're assuming Clark. Clark's new study of the painter. If these apples should fall, Cezanne and the present is a book about Cezanne and also about the difficulties of writing such a book. So first paragraph says, there is this book which is about Cezanne also about the difficulties about writing a book about Shazan. I finally got my pronunciation right. For Clark, Shazan felt the modern condition as an intermingled banality and strangeness. Older artists like Pissarro and Impressionists had mixed the two already and younger ones like Matisse would go on to rearrange them in a number of novel ways. Shazan found the modern condition the condition of society is the modern condition, a mix of, of intermingled banality and strangeness. On one side, it was banal, very routine, very boring, very mundane. On the other hand, it had a lot of strange elements. So it was a mix, a mixture of banality and strangeness. Strangeness. Other artists had also found this. Older artists like Pissarro and the Impressionists had mixed the two already. And the younger ones would go on to rearrange the elements in a number of innovative ways. But Shazan's unique achievement was to balance banality with strangeness. He balanced one with the other so precisely that neither one predominated. In his paintings, his theme, he mixed the two in a, such a balance that one did not dominate or dominate or override the other. His still lifes, Paintings still on still life landscapes and portraits are familiar, but not comfor comfortingly so. They are as vivid and intangible as a hologram. So when you look at his paintings, different types of paintings that he's made, one way they are on familiar themes, so you feel that familiarity. At the same time, not you don't get not comfortingly so, not so familiar that you become very comfortable watching it. They are vivid. They are one side. They are very vivid clear, descriptive, also intangible. It's a strange mix as a hologram. Bright but unnourishing. Not even in a stark, grand way that can be dignified into tragedy. So his paintings are a mix of various things, a mix of opposites. And because this is all apparent at a glance, when you look at his paintings, you get all these feelings at a glance. There is no secret waiting to be uncovered. You don't have to really look at them and start you know, searching for secrets. There's no secret waiting to be uncovered. None of the delights of decoding to sweeten the deal. Oh yeah, look, this is there. You don't have to. It's all there on the surface. Everything is on the surface of this painting, yet just out of reach. Look at that. So everything is there, yet you feel it's out of reach. There's something about it that makes it inaccessible. All right? Just remember, you don't have to understand anything more than what the author has said. That's the main thing. For a century, art critics praised Shazan for the solidity and the indelibility of his images. He gave solid, indelible images. One which cannot, you know, they're clear. They're clear and uh, solid. So, artists, critics have praised him for that. For giving walls and apples and tables a a thingness more realistic than conventional realism could manage. His paintings of, of walls and apples and tables, everything, right, 
was so realistic. It went beyond the realism of conventional realism. There have a lot of painters who, realistic painters who believed in realism, who believed that painting should depict things as they are, society as it is. And Shazan went beyond the conventional realism in giving paintings which were solid, indelible and all that. And critics praised him for that. But that is only half the story. Okay. What is the other half? He tried to convey something solid and indelible about modernity. He tried to convey. After all, his paintings reflect the society he was living in. He tried to convey something solid and indelible. Indelible cannot be erased, right? About modernity. He fell short, but he couldn't really depict uh, modernism. He fell short. Not for lack of talent. Now, why did he fall short? Not because he didn't have the talent to depict it in a painting, but because everything solid in the modern world melts into air. Whatever is solid about the modern world doesn't last forever, isn't indelible, which is why he tried to depict it, fell short, because whatever was real in the modern world would disappear very soon. Instead of assuming emptiness, Shazan stumbled upon it. He didn't assume that modernism was empty. He stumbled into it. He came into this realization by chance. It was a fitting achievement for his era. The era where he stayed, the era of modernism, modernity. His paintings were a fitting depiction of the era, a fitting achievement for that era, in which the bourgeois alienation had sunk in. But alternatives were still within living memory. Clark has written about the challenges. So this is as far as his painting, what they depicted, what it couldn't depict. That's gone. Next is about Clark and his book. Clark has written about the challenges of converting pictures into words. You are looking at a picture and you are criticizing it or critiquing it. You're looking, you're, you're trying to, uh, write, you're writing a book about Shazan and his works. So Clark has written about the difficulty of converting Pictures into words. Shazan's paintings are pictures. On that, you're writing a book. You're converting it into words. And he said it's very challenging. His analysis of paintings are in part analysis of what it means to analyze paintings. Look at the play of words here. So he analyzes Shazan's paintings. And as part of the analysis, you get a glimpse of what is it to analyze paintings. Words and pictures aren't the same and never will be, right? It's an unanswerable problem. You cannot say that words and pictures are the same. You might try to write about paintings, write about the pictures, but that conversion cannot happen. It's an unanswerable problem, infuriating in its obviousness. That's so obvious and that's why it's so frustrating. Small wonder so many art critics ignore it. Shazan, uh, Clark analyzed it, wrote about the challenges he faced. But a lot of art critics ignored it. And it's not surprising. They don't want to say that, you know, I cannot, I'm incapable of explaining this painting in words. They, they won't do it. So they ignored it. Clark wants to write about Shazan the way Shazan painted the world. He wanted to write about Shazan, use words, the same way Shazan used his brush to paint pictures. He wants to model. He doesn't want to just make an argument. His late prose style with its strange blend of doubt and authority finds its match in Shazan's technique. Shazan's technique of painting, Clark's technique of writing with a strange blend of doubt and authority are similar. Vivid observations collect one by one, but the result is to make their subject perpetually seem one more vivid observation away, sowing unease about the big picture. So you try to make observations one by one about the painting. But the result is that the subject, you, you think you, you, you're still not able to get the big picture. All right. So he tries to describe Cezanne's painting. And every time he describes it, he feels that he is missing the big picture. Maybe there is no big, big picture, only many pictures. Clark writes that Shazan defined the modern condition by balancing not only banality and strangeness, but also plainness and hyperbole, seriousness and sensuousness, lugubriousness and euphoria, evenness and disequilibrium. 
Shazan in his paintings were depicting modernity by balancing two opposite things, not just strangeness and banality, many other opposing features, contradictory features of modernity was depicted by Shazan in his paintings. He And so Clark had a problem writing a book about Shazan's paintings. He can't decide if Shazan painted reality or phantasmagoria. Was he, was he depicting reality because they had so many strange elements combined together? Is he really depicting reality or is it some kind of fantasy that he is depicting? Nor if the way he painted them feels consoling or enriching. He can't even decide that. He can't even decide whether what the theme of the painting was, whether the painting was realistic or, or fantasy. He can't even decide if the paintings left you feeling consoled or the paintings were consoling or enraging. What was the effect of the painting on him also he couldn't tell. Because his, the... Uh, Shazan's paintings were so complicated, having all these elements and themes in them. This endling, swerving disease at first, but after a while, this endless doubt, is it this, is it this, is it this, is it this, I can't decide between this and this. It disease, it makes your head reel at first, it makes you say, what's happening? It confuses you at first. But after a while, it comes to seem like an essential piece of Clark's argument. First, you can't understand what he's saying. After that, you realize that that is his argument. That may be an essential element of his argument. He offers brilliant description after brilliant description of Cezanne's paintings, none of which quite does the trick. So he's analyzing the painting through brilliant description. Somewhere, he does not still capture the essence of Cezanne's paintings. He misses the trick somewhere because words cannot be depicted. Paintings cannot be depicted into words. Fantastic painting, first about Shazan and his painting, then about Clark's description, the problems Clark faced, and last bit on why he probably faced those problems. That's what the passage is about. Which of the following best captures the concluding paragraph of the passage? We'll go back to the concluding paragraph. Let's quickly look at the options. Shazan's paintings were chaotic and turbulent. Shazan's paintings were difficult to put under a single label as they depicted varying themes and conditions. Clark described Shazan's paintings brilliantly but still misrepresented the theme of the paintings. Clark omitted the tricky parts of Shazan's pictures in his brilliant descriptions. Which one is the best uh, captures the main point of the concluding paragraph. We'll go to the concluding paragraph. Clark writes that Shazan defined modern conditions by balancing not only banality and strangeness, but also one balanced banality and strangeness, also plainness and hyperbole, seriousness and sensuousness, lugubriousness and euphoria. Lugubriousness means feeling sad. Euphoria, extreme happiness evenness and disequilibrium, two opposites, okay, he balanced, this is one, okay, so he did so many things, Clark says that this is how Shazan defined modernity, second, Clark can't decide if Shazan really depicted realism or fantasy, he, or nor can he decide if Shazan's paintings were consoling or enraging, okay, so when you read this, all these descriptions, you get confused at first but you realize this is Clark's argument to tell you that this is the point about Shazan's painting you don't know what it's about you don't know what it is because it has so many elements it has so many themes it has it is balancing so many things together so even though he gives brilliant descriptions he's not able to really tell you what the paintings are all about what Shazan's painting is all about okay this is the gist which one goes closest to it Shazan's paintings were chaotic and turbulent. Was they, were they? They balanced chaos and turbulence and uh, harmony. But the, the paintings themselves cannot be called. Shazan's paintings were difficult to put under a single label as they depicted varying themes and conditions. So Clark couldn't say, were they realistic? Were they fantasy? Were they consoling? Were they enraging? They're balancing not just banality and strainless, they're balancing so many. So he can't, cannot describe, he cannot say what Clark's paintings are all about. 
B looks like a good, a good summary of the last paragraph. Let's look at C and D. Clark described Shazan's paintings brilliantly, but misrepresented the themes. He didn't misrepresent. He just, he says, by, this is the point. When you look at his descriptions, you feel dizzy at first, but then realize this is his central argument. Look, I can't decide what the paintings are all about. I'm, I can't decide. Therefore, he is difficult to describe. That's his central argument. So he doesn't misrepresent anywhere. That's the wrong word there. He omitted the tricky parts in his brilliant descriptions. No, he gave a lot of brilliant description. Missed the trick means still couldn't get the main essence, couldn't describe the essence of the paintings, right? So my correct answer is B.